an organization like NHSX, obviously this sort of uh, cross-body standard setting organization, looking at things like mandating open standards, open API, open access, mm. um, someone like Matthew Gould coming in saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this forward. Does, is that, that presumably that, that's good news for you as, as an organization? Oh, I, I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal news. We are so lucky. I mean, w what Matthew has done um, is bring talents from both inside the mm. NHS system and outside it with a clear mandate to talk about the implementation of open standards and interoperability. Mm. And here at GS1, where we're completely device and system agnostic, it plays right to our strengths. Mm -hmm. So we, we are very supportive of NHSX and we are, are, are very happy to be working with them. Mm. Excellent. Uh, you know, with, with things like the uh, health system support framework and the, you know, the sort of approved uh, eight, eight EPR vendors, obviously you're all kind of, you know, the, the, the core thing there is that one, you know, they're interoperable and they have, and they have open, open standards, so presumably that's kind of also something that's good, good news for everyone that's interested in that. Um, I think, the, kind of circling back around the head a little bit, uh, the, mm. one of the sessions that, the, that you'll be joining there uh, is, is around breaking down the data dams and how you how you actually kind of re-deliver interoperability in, a, in an organization whether it be a trust or whether it be in a, an, another part of the health and social care ecosystem in your opinion is it more important to tackle the technical cultural or operational challenges hmm. um, that's a really really good question i think it's a mixture of, of each but i think the biggest challenge the whole NHS faces today is actually the cultural change mm. and the cultural challenges. You can have the best technology in the world, but if people find a way to avoid it or to create workarounds mm. or to not embrace it, then it's going to fail. Mm. I think we are in a situation across the whole NHS state and landscape that interoperable technology is getting better by the week. Mm -hmm. So utilizing open standards, whether it's GS1, whether it's FHIR, whether it's other systems, I think is really important. And it's great to have that um, direction going forward, but it's very clear you've got to have the technology, you've got to make sure it's interoperable. Mm -hmm. But it is it is definitely it's definitely culture. And why it's culture is it's also about leadership mm -hmm. because what you tend to find happen is that if you don't have the appropriate leadership and culture, people will naturally try and fix the problem rather than ask the question behind the problem. Mm -hmm. And so my, my, I'll give you an example of this, which is where if we're, we're looking at, let's say, tracking patients around a, around a hospital, getting to know where they are, that's really, really important. So you can go out and there are lots of providers out there that can provide a, a, a system, mm -hmm. but that system won't speak to other systems. Mm -hmm. So it fixes, the, it fixes one problem, but mm -hmm. pushes the problem elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And so it's really, really important that we have leadership and culture for change that delivers interoperable business systems. Mm -hmm. I think it comes together as a holy trinity. Mm -hmm. which, which is fortunate because actually one of, one of the theatres ahead this year is a culture and implementation theatre that yeah. very much is focusing on, on those sorts of issues. It's saying that actually, you know, you can go off and procure the best bit of kit and best tech and say, isn't that wonderful? But actually, unless you have the people on board, unless you kind of have this sort of often multidisciplinary team who are involved in the implementation and are all kind of on board with whatever it is and they say, yes, we want it, this is how we're going to use it actually the end, the end result, as you say, can often create more problems than the initial thing you're trying to solve. Um, which leads me to, to my final question, actually, and that's sort of like, why, why HET? Why, why is HET important? Why, why do you support HET? And sort of what are you looking forward to most about coming to the event? So uh, I and the team at GS1 are really excited about October 1 and 2 and the HET exhibition and conference. We could spend every single one of our days attending conferences and exhibitions and we limit ourselves to three or four a year mm -hmm. and very close to that top of that list, very at the top of that list is HET. It really is and the reasons for that is because it is very topical things that are being discussed. Mm -hmm. It involves, there's a buzzy atmosphere, there are many, many people there and it's a good opportunity to meet new friends and old. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Glenn.